Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you've had an amazing week. So today I'm just doing a little chatty, chilled, get ready with me, doing my everyday makeup routine, using my everyday makeup bag, while I answer a few of your questions that you left me over on Instagram. So it's just a very chilled little like catch up video, but I also thought I would take the time to show you through what I've been using on my face, which is not much different to be honest to probably the last time I did this, but, but it is just simply what I do every day. So little update. And before we jump into the questions and get ready with me, I just wanted to give a very big thank you to today's video sponsor, Nord Green Copenhagen. If you're a regular on my channel, you will have definitely heard me talk about Nord Green before. They are an amazing Danish timepiece brand based in Copenhagen. I don't know what it is, but anything Danish just seems to set my 2% Danish heart a flutter. And the Nord Green watches are absolutely no exception. They're just beautiful, classic, minimalist designs that are really timeless, go with everything, are quite androgynous as well, so they work for many different genders. And they have just launched a new Autumn Winter 21 range that features some new face colors as well as strap designs. So the one I wanted to show you today is what I'm wearing. This is the Unica design, which you know I have in the gold, but they've just released this beautiful silver and gold strapped design. So there's actually gold down the middle and silver on the sides. And I just think it is so pretty. It's definitely a little bit more of a feminine watch, definitely a dress watch. But of course, like all of the Nord Green timepieces, you can easily switch out the strap for something a little bit more day to day, such as one of their leather or nylon straps, which just makes it super versatile and practical. The main reason I really loved this one with the gold and the silver, it means it kind of works for any jewelry that I'm wearing. So today I've got my gold on, but I do have some really lovely silver earrings that really work with this as well. So it kind of means that you can mix metals in a really easy effortless way that doesn't look like a hodgepodge because you've got it sort of integrated on one piece. And besides the aesthetic, of course, the other reason I love Nord Green as a company is that they have an amazing giving back program. So anytime you purchase a watch from Nord Green, they donate a portion of your purchase to one of their three NGOs. And as the consumer, you get to choose which program speaks to you the most. They also place a great importance on sustainability from their packaging, which is made up of upcycled plastic bottles and FSC certified cartons to carbon neutral shipping, as well as offering refurbished products. So any watches that end up getting returned, they'll refurbish them to be resold under the refurbished collection, which I think is a great way of reducing waste as a company. Now I do of course have a coupon code. It is just Anna. It will get you 15% off anything on the Nord Green site. Um, but I do encourage you to check out the new autumn winter collection. I'll have a link directly to it at the top of the description. Alrighty, so I've got all my makeup in my little everyday makeup bag. This is just a little um, makeup bag I got free when I did a Cezanne order. I typically do my makeup in the bathroom at the moment just as I say while we're here in this space I haven't really set up like a proper makeup beauty area or anything. I'm just using my work desk at the moment um, because it's quite nice lighting with the skylight in this little window here. But yeah, I've just found it so much easier just having like a little everyday makeup bag that I occasionally swap things out of with my main collection, which I keep in the bedroom. But hopefully in our next place, I'll be able to set something up a little bit more um, permanent that isn't in the bathroom. So I'm going to try and remember to talk about the products I'm using throughout, but if I do forget, I will have everything linked below that is going on my face. So I'm going to start out, of course, with my everyday base, the Purito Sika Clearing BB Cream in shade 21. This needs no introduction on my channel. If you're new here, it's my favorite product. I've gone through about five tubes, but if you're not new here, don't worry, I'll start chatting about something else real quickly because <laughs> you're probably so bored. As you just do a couple little dots around my face, like directly onto my skin, which is quite easy. Um, and keeps your fingers nice and clean. And then I'll go in with a little buffing brush to brush it in. I actually wanted to talk about these. Can't remember the name of them because they don't have like the name on the actual handle. But this brush is actually from YesStyle. It comes in a pack of three, like a three set um, with kind of varying sizes. This is the big foundation one and then there's a slightly smaller one that's better for like concealer and then like an ultra tiny one which you can use for I guess very detailed concealing, but it's such a nice brush and it was really affordable for the set. So I'll try to remember to link um, my brushes as well. It's something I hardly ever do. I'm very bad at it, but I will take the time and do that for you guys today because this is really worthwhile. Okay, so the first question while I'm rubbing this in, Emma was asking, how do you decide on things to buy without succumbing to fads or trends too much? And I thought this was such a good question because it's been on my mind a lot lately, especially in regards to like interiors trends, um, obviously because we are getting really involved in house hunting and just like starting to throw ideas around about what we'd kind of love. And 
something that I think is really important and I really hope that once we you know get a house I'll, I'll be able to go into more detail about this kind of thought process around interiors but I think it's really really important to honor kind of the story of the house that you're actually in and the kind of vibe that that gives off let that be a starting point that you can then kind of add your own personal touch to and what I mean by that is like my style over the years has changed so much depending on like the type of home that I'm in so in Australia we had a couple of really cute little like inner city apartments especially the last one we were in that had a really like New York, New York kind of loft style feel about it um, so we kind of stuck with that and stuck with quite like apartment sort of appropriate furniture and pieces and stuff but of course I added my um, sort of cozy cabiny vibes in and amongst it but it was like kind of just mixed in with that apartment feel so I didn't completely make it feel like I'm in a log cabin in an apartment I sort of stuck to that like Scandi apartment sort of vibe but then just added some warmer more cozy elements to it and then when we moved into the last place that we were in that was of course so characterful in and of itself the building had so much to say it was definitely that kind of warm workers cottage kind of style home that's been beautifully renovated um, and it did come with a lot of existing furniture like when we moved in it was pretty furnished because it was a family home so I didn't I wasn't able to obviously like add too much of our own taste but I could definitely like work with that and go like the ultra cozy cabin kind of vibe so I guess instead of trying to do that really like Scandi apartment style sort of vibe that we had in Australia and just bringing that back and sort of forcing it on this place I really like tried to find pieces that would complement the existing stuff there but also add our own touch as well. Now this place that we're in at the moment is a little bit of an exception because we hope it will be quite temporary. It's not a very pretty background here uh, in my little office. We're just using the furniture we have. If you missed the tour that I did around this space you want to see what this wee place is like definitely um, check it out. I'll try to remember to link it up because this was actually going to be the house we were going to buy. We were going to do it through like a private sale. Unfortunately it didn't work out when we were still able to move in. It's a long story but I'll link those videos. There's two videos where I kind of discuss it a bit more. But that tour video especially I talk about all the kind of different ways I was going to style the place. And But I guess the other parts of your question is more probably to do with like style as in and like trends and fads. Probably more to do with like clothing. Um, and honestly I would definitely say that I you know like everyone tend to go along with certain trends at certain times mainly because that's often that's all available at the shops like it's pretty hard if your style goes very heavily against what's trending because then it's really hard to buy clothes but one of the rules I really try and live by is I don't try and force my body to kind of wear trends that it really doesn't suit or that I don't feel comfortable in so I often try new trends and kind of see what they're like because it might be something that I actually really do like but ultimately I'll only ever buy something if I actually feel good in it and I actually think it flatters my body and I'm not afraid to continue to wear things that maybe are deemed a bit old-fashioned like I still love skinny jeans even though all of the Gen Zers are like you're such a millennial <laughs> you can't fit knee-high boots over baggy jeans you know I really really love my knee-high boots that I have they are 10 or even 12 years old now so maybe they are a bit dated but they're definitely like my style so I love them and I'll just continue to wear them I think you've just got to wear what looks good on you and what feels good and that is the same with interiors as well even if there's a style of interior design that you like love if it's a bit dated who cares like you have to live in it so you do what you want to do um, obviously being aware that sometimes certain more permanent kind of changes to your home can affect its resale value that's the only thing to think about um, so if it's just small decorating things I think go full bore on whatever you love um, but if you're planning to like sell your home you might want to avoid putting in anything that could could be a bit dated within a few years if it's a very like permanent fixture or have it be something that you could easily remove and just take back to something a bit basic if you were gonna put the house on the market or something so quickly before we move on to the next question what did I just put on my face flower beauty light illusion concealer in the shade fair it's my everyday it's my fourth tube this year not so eh? and my number seven airbrush away translucent finishing powder that I just use very strategically you can see my skin still has such a glow from my BB cream working my way through this one it is nearly finished I won't be able to get much more because it's pretty hard to get that part of the pan but I've got a couple of other powders to move on to after that one it's been a really nice powder would highly recommend it if you're in the UK you can get your hands on it really really easily 
But I'm now going to do blush and bronzer, so I'll quickly talk about those so I can move on to another question. I've been using this, the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer Stick, again, now that I've finished up my big Chanel one. So this is what I've put into my everyday makeup bag, um, because my little Danessa Myricks one is quite small and it's really nice for travel, so I kind of want to save it for that, and then just use this hefty thing <laughs> on the daily. I will say that I think this is a wee bit warm, it's not like my most favourite colour. I do have to be a little bit light-handed with it. I just use a little like kabuki brush, this is a Bobbi Brown one, um, and I just kind of like stamp it into my skin, but it can be very easy to go overboard, so you just have to build it up really slowly. I'm not sure like I'd recommend this for someone with very fair skin like I have. I might still try and hunt for something that's a bit more appropriate to kind of like talk about and share, but it is a nice formula in that it blends beautifully. You just have to be very careful. <laughs> and then I'm going to pop on a little bit of this Laura Mia number two cream blush that I talked about in my recent favorites video. This one is from YesStyle, it's only like a few dollars, like under ten dollars easily, and it's such a nice cream blush, it's in the shade two. So a lot of you have been asking about house hunting, how it's been going. Um, we have started the process, so I actually have a vlog coming up next where we will share a bit about how that's been going. Another question I got was around budgeting tips. Um, yeah, I wouldn't call myself a really strict budgeter. I'm I'm very casual with it. Like my mum is so detailed down to like she knows how many like blooming deodorants she's gonna buy in a year. <laughs> and she has like spreadsheets and it's like really intense. I think for me I would call myself like a flexible budgeter in that I have a general idea of like how much we're gonna earn over a certain period. Obviously it's a bit flexible with some of the work that we do, so that's kind of why things can't be super strict. I'm sure if I had like a 100 percent fixed kind of salary, which I do, I'm on salary now, but I still have other parts of my work that kind of supplement it that are flexible. So it's always a wee bit harder to budget in that sense. I always work with a smaller amount than I actually think I'm kind of going to earn. Like I think of like the worst case possible <laughs> so that I won't overspend. And it means we're living within our means and then if we get a bit of extra money that's cool, we can spend it on like holidays and kind of fun stuff. I'm just going to put on a little bit of lip balm because my lips are a bit dry. It's just the Care Now lip balm. It's like the dupe for the Laneige lip sleeping mask. It's almost like a financial diet. I find it almost a little too restrictive and a bit too like obsessive. But I do feel like in the last few years, like the last eight years or so, we've never gotten to a point where we've like overspent to the point where we've got no money or we've like misbudgeted and we have to go into debt for it. Like obviously apart from like student sort of debt and we hopefully we'll get a mortgage soon. <laughs> um, that's kind of different debt, but like we haven't needed to like go and get a loan or a credit card or something because we've like been because we've mismanaged our money so I think I just have quite a natural cautionary sort of way of spending where I like spending money and my husband likes spending money but he doesn't quite have the filter to kind of do the math in his head quickly and make sure we can afford something so I, I feel like I'm a little more cautious than him in that regard I'll always be like do 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 like can we actually afford this should we be spending this um and it's been quite successful so sorry I don't have like super awesome tips um but we're just not super intense budgeters. We're just like quite flexible and kind of have to go with the flow a bit. Um, obviously making sure we've always got like some sort of bare minimum earnings coming in. Becca asked, what are the top five things you've been most proud of this past year? Which I thought was a really nice question to talk about. So much has happened in a year. If you think back, this time last year me and Alex were like putting up the video about us moving back to New Zealand. So basically we were just about to leave Australia and we were in those final crazy weeks where we were trying to sell off our home things during a level four lockdown like it was nuts. Um, I mean, to be fair, Melbourne's lockdown was never as harsh as level four here, but they called it stage four lockdown. But it was really like a 3.5. But my gosh, it was still very difficult to try and like move countries in that kind of environment and like to sell off or get rid of all your stuff. But like, my gosh, so much has happened in that time. Like, first of all, I'm really proud of the fact that I just kind of threw myself into doing auditions and going for jobs here when we got back. I, I felt like in Melbourne I started to get a wee bit overwhelmed by like just the sheer competition there like in regards to the music world and I just I held myself back from many opportunities because of fear of failure and I just felt like when I got back to New Zealand I was just like I've got nothing to lose I kind of have to find work um, and so I just threw myself into lots of auditions. I did four in like six months, which was, that's quite a lot, I feel. 
um, especially when you're preparing for them like really seriously. Um, oh, by the way, I'm using my Mecca Max Brow Guru. Let's see how well I can talk and do my brows because it's quite a challenge at times. I did four auditions in like six months and then passed two of those auditions and got trials for both of them and passed both trials. So I won two jobs um, in the same orchestra to be fair. So I won the Tutti job with CSO and then um, went on and did my trial for Principal Second and then just recently won that, as you know. Um, and that's very exciting and now I'm done. <laughs> done, done, done. I'm very happy with this job. I'm going to enjoy it for many years. But I'm really proud of myself for doing that. Um, I'm proud of us for coping so well with the big changes. I remember when we moved back and it was like our first night in the new place, like, so the old place. Um, and I just remember being like, man, this is difficult. Like, it's going to be so hard to adapt and readapt to life back here, um, missing our friends in Australia, but I'm really proud of just how we've been able to adapt. We've thrown ourselves at opportunities, we've you know really reconnected with a lot of our music friends here. I do feel really bad that I have not reconnected enough with my school friends from Christchurch, so hello friends if you are watching, if you do watch my content, I'm so sorry. Just been really busy trying to win a job. But my goal is now over the like summer months to kind of um, reach out to some of my old school friends and like reconnect those as well because I do feel a bit bad but there's been a lot of people to reconnect with um, and family and kind of my music connections kind of has come first so I'm sure y'all will understand. I don't know if I have five things. They're all quite big things I guess so those are just a couple of the things that I feel like I'm really proud of this year. All right, so for eyeshadow, I'm just using my little singles palette. Got a couple of NARS singles down here, but also these ones are Nabla singles up here. These are my favorite colors. So I'm just going to do a little mixture of these two shades here. We've got Coconut Milk, which is the lighter one, and Nasiko, Nasiko, which is like a taupey brown. I'm gonna mix those for a crease color and then do just the Nasiko color as like a little bit more definition and then put a bit of water dream which is this beautiful sparkly champagne on the end and just kind of tap that on my lids it's like really glittery so pretty someone was asking about what were your top likes and dislikes about living in Melbourne I'm thinking of moving there <sighs> I wouldn't move there just yet <laughs> honestly I think I would wait until pandemic life is kind of a thing of the past poor Melbourne is currently going through a bit of what it kind of went through this time last year um, thanks to Sydney because New South Wales has really struggled to contain their Delta outbreak and it's getting worse and worse and worse it's really heartbreaking to see and unfortunately like Victoria tried to do the kind of like elimination strategy that like New Zealand uses and that they used last year but they just seem to really be struggling to contain it Delta is just so infectious and the population is just not vaccinated enough um, that's basically what Australia has decided to do. They're trying to just focus mainly on like getting vaccinations up. So they've kind of pulled out of the elimination strategy thing. The quality of life there at the moment is a little bit struggling. Um, obviously here in New Zealand, we're still dealing with a bit of a Delta outbreak at the moment as well. Um, mainly in Auckland, at least at the time of filming this, it is pretty much all centered in Auckland but that always could change because every time I talk about the pandemic on this channel especially in relation to what's happening here in New Zealand things change dramatically by the time it gets uploaded so let's just hope I don't jinx it however I do feel like at least as I say at the time of filming New Zealand's doing really well at just like squashing it the South Island where I live is no longer in lockdown we're kind of in just like restrictions just to be extra cautious and safe because we didn't end up actually getting any cases here but poor Melbourne does look like it's headed a bit towards like 2020 life again which sucks oh my gosh it was so exhausting but in normal times things that make Melbourne amazing if you love the arts if you love music if you love creative ventures then definitely check out Melbourne the whole reason we moved there originally was just it was so rich in like music and arts culture so absolutely love that um, the food culture in Melbourne as well phenomenal something I desperately miss like New Zealand has some beautiful food here as well obviously and some really amazing restaurants but you don't quite get the full range like um, the Chinese food in particular very good in Melbourne as well as the Italian food Greek food 
It's amazing. So if you love food and you love coffee, Melbourne is a great place to go. I also really, I loved where we used to live. So we lived in Balaclava, which is quite close to the Bayside kind of area, the St Kilda, Brighton, that sort of whole area it was just so nice to like walk up and down, especially during lockdown because we were allowed to go for like exercise. So Alex and I would just go for regular walks up and down the water front and it was just so so nice by the way i am using the flower beauty forever wear eyeliner in brownstone just doing a little bit of definition it's not quite as glamorous and kind of picture perfect i think as something like sydney like sydney harbour is pretty spectacular but it's much more expensive to live in sydney than melbourne um and i think when you live in melbourne you appreciate it more than if you just visit um because you kind of visit expecting to see all the glitz and the glam and you're like it's okay <laughs> it's not the most striking city but it's about finding those cute little like underground bars and and like secret places that have amazing food and it's just it's a lot more like it's an amazing place to live also the tram and train network is incredible definitely get yourself like a place um that is sort of within five minutes walk of either a train or a tram stop because it just makes things so much easier and i think overall pretty good weather as well like it's not balmy australian tropical weather it's very like seasonal so the winters are cold but then you do get those really hot summers as well so it's quite nice because you get a bit of everything and the autumns in melbourne are unbeatable just like new zealand autumn's my favorite time there because it's still really hot it can be like 30 degrees but it's just so much more settled less windy and you still get those chilly mornings and nights which is lovely so i really love autumn in melbourne also if you're into sport i've heard that the footy is great <laughs> Not that I got into it while I was there. I have lots and lots of questions about like the house hunting thing. I'll probably talk about that stuff more in like another video. And of course we have our first house hunting vlog coming up next week. So you'll get to see more on that soon. I'll definitely talk about it. I just want to get through some of the other questions that have come up. Megan was asking, do you know when CSO concerts will return after lockdown? Yes. So we can't perform basically until level one. So in New Zealand, we've got four different levels. We've been in level one in Christchurch for like pretty much the whole year apart from I think we had a couple of weeks at level two in February or March it was like yeah March I think it was like maybe two weeks and then and it was a really short little outbreak and they kind of got on top of it quickly but since we've come back to New Zealand Alex and I have been in level one which is basically life as normal but just with no international travel so we've had 10 months of pretty good times in Christchurch this whole time so but then of course the day after we moved <laughs> into this house we went into a level four lockdown because there was a Delta outbreak in Auckland and this like the Prime Minister was like we just cannot have Delta spreading through this country so they put us in a snap lockdown um level four is the harshest kind of restriction so we can't even order takeaway food the only place you can get food is from a supermarket or like a dairy which is like a small um, suburb kind of convenience store they're called dairies here in New Zealand they're really quaint I'm gonna try and do my mascara I'm just using up this molos molossal <laughs> Good, Maybelline Colossal <laughs> mascara that I got, I got sent this ages ago in Australia and when we were moving I was just like, well I'll just take them with me anyway. Um, of course I wouldn't rebuy this now, but just, you know, waste not, want not. So level four is like a proper lockdown, like you can only leave the house to go get your food from the groceries or go to a pharmacy or a doctor to get medical care or go for exercise. I don't know, Kiwis across the board just feel, you know, mostly very compliant and very understanding and no one likes lockdown everyone hates it of course but we all kind of do it anyway because we know it's the quickest way out of it um, especially for like our country and our circumstances while it would have been great yes if we'd all been vaccinated by this point and could have just let it run through like not not a problem but that's just not where we're at because we are a little bit further down the queue in terms of getting stock of the vaccine but the vaccination program is ramping up i think it's something like 30 percent of adults now are fully vaccinated and maybe like 60 percent have had at least a dose i'm actually yet to have any because i am one of the last groups i don't have underlying health conditions and i'm only 30 so i was one of the last groups so i'm booked in for october for my first one um, and then in november for my second one which i'm very nervous about not because i'm anti-vax at all totally love vaccinations just quite anti-needle <laughs> very much fearful of needles but I'm gonna do it anyway because it's the right thing to do just wish it was like the polio vaccine we could just you know sippy sip I've heard though that it's really not that bad like people who have had lots of vaccinations in their life are like you know it's nowhere near as bad as like the tetanus shot because that has kind of 
scarred me <laughs> mentally. Until we're really like vaccinated as a country, um, we just can't let it run rampant. We just can't do that. Lots and lots of people will die and that's just not our approach here. So we did a little snap lockdown. Um, the South Island has since come out of that. We went to level three for a week and then now we're in level two, which is basically kind of life as normal, but with lots of restrictions on like group size, like event size. Um, you can have 100 people outside, 50 people inside. Uh, and of course, we've got the masks now that we use as well for those kind of settings, those indoor settings especially. Now as a performer, unless you're doing a very small chamber music concert, you can't really perform. So our concerts have been canceled. We actually didn't have any scheduled for the initial sort of lockdown period, which was really fortunate. But because it's looking likely that we'll stay in level two for a while, just while Auckland like gets a handle on their outbreak, because they are still in level four, Auckland is remaining in there until they're kind of at a stage where they can confidently come out of it. I suspect we'll stay in level two. So they have cancelled our kind of concerts prematurely for the end of the month and even one in October's now been cancelled. So I don't think I'm going to be performing in my role at CSO until the end of October, which is quite heartbreaking. That's like two and a half months of no playing, no performing with my colleagues. Thankfully though, as a salaried musician, I'm still getting paid, which is just amazing. I feel very very fortunate and it all came like good timing because my like higher principal salary started the week that the lockdown hit so that was very fortunate but of course I would much rather be earning that by performing rather than just sitting at home the only thing that it's been like a benefit for is just it's given us a lot of time to get settled here and of course um, begin the house hunting kind of thing so in some ways it's been a blessing in that regard. We talk a little bit more about that in the house hunting vlog, but yeah, I would never wish this though on, on the country, <laughs> obviously. Like I'm just trying to find a silver lining in it, that's all. I've got time for one more question. So I wanted to answer this one about my job. So someone was asking like, how many hours a week is the job? Like what's involved in it? I'm just gonna quickly apply though some lip liner. <laughs> my NYX suede lip liner in lavender and lace. Just put a little bit of this on and then I'll just put a little bit of lip balm on again. Voila! Okay. Okay, so having an orchestral job, you you don't get paid like per hour. Um, I'm on a salary, so I just get paid the same amount every week. And some weeks I'll work more hours and other weeks I'll work less. But my contract is for 250 calls a year. Now in the music world, a call is usually like either a rehearsal or a concert or a recording session. Um, and, and the CSO it also includes like community engagement activities, might be workshops and such um, alongside little community concerts. And a call is usually up to three hours in length. I'm contracted to do 250 calls a year. So if you times that by three hours, then you're gonna get 750 sort of hours, like contact hours a year, which equals close to 15 a week, I think, divided by 52. Yes, 14.42 hours a week, which sounds very low, doesn't it? Like 15 hours of work a week. But the reality is an orchestral musician is you do a lot of prep outside of those contact hours to, to make up the kind of whole amount of work. So I definitely think I do about the same amount of non-contact hours as I do for contact hours. So if, if I'm spending 15 hours that week at rehearsals and stuff, I'll be spending that same amount of time practicing my instrument, learning the repertoire, doing bowings, because as a principal musician, I'm responsible for the bowings for my section. So there's a lot of other things that kind of go into the work. But that's everything from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this little chill, chatty video. Once again, don't forget to check out Nord Green's Autumn Winter 21 collection. I'll have a link and a coupon code in the top of the description for you. And until my next video, I hope you guys have a wonderful few days and we'll talk soon. Bye.